I, uh, I don't know <clears throat> if you know this about me, but um, I don't. I don't think there should be so much attention on the pastor. Um, I feel like we should have a farewell for anyone that leaves. Um, and if we don't have it for everyone, then let's not do it for the pastor either. Because how, why am I more important than any of you? I'm not. I just have a different function, but we're all part of this body of Christ. So I, uh, I hope, uh, I hope you don't uh, focus on me, but the message of God today. As you probably know, the definition of a Christian is someone who, who does what? follows Christ. So following Jesus is what Christianity is all about. And if you ask what I have done at Vallejo Drive for the last uh, almost eight years, as a pastor, I hope the answer is helping people follow Jesus more closely. Because what else are we called to do as Christians? Is there anything else that we must do than to follow Christ? No, that's comprehensive. In doing so, we become like God, we imitate him, and we, we keep all the commandments and even more. So following Jesus is the meaning of life. It is who we are. We wear it as our name. I am a person who follows Christ is the badge of Christianity. So, I'd like to ask you that one more time. How closely are we following Jesus? Because sometimes when I think I'm following Jesus very well, I might not be. Yeah? Has that happened to you before? And has someone pointed out to you? Oh, no, I don't know that you're following Jesus. Yes, I am! I'm full of love and compassion. Daisy, my dog, we've had Daisy for three years now. And uh, since she was five months old. And Daisy follows me everywhere I go. I mean, she would love to be here right now, right next to me. She would. Because she follows me to the bathroom. She, you know, she's not allowed on the bed. So when I'm in bed, she goes under the bed, right underneath my head. Because that's as close as she can get. When I am walking around the house, she's so close to, to my legs that I kick her with every step. And, and you would think, if you get kicked in the head with every step, you would like kind of back off a little bit? No. She, it doesn't matter. She just, that's what she does. That's what Christianity is. We follow Jesus. Even if we get kicked in the head, we follow him no matter what. We must all become like Daisy. Christians are those who refuse to stop following Christ no matter what. Job says this. In chapter 13, verse 15, Though God may slay me, I will trust him still. Everyone around Job kept telling him, Give up on God, because obviously God has given up on you. And Job says, Even if God has given up on me, I will not give up on him. Even if I get kicked in the head with every step, I will still follow my God. Now, following Christ is, is not without issues because, as I mentioned already, uh, we don't always agree on what that is. And 
we are sometimes mistaken on, on, on uh, following Christ when we may not be. For example, for a while, for centuries, I think, and maybe until recently, people have taught that being a Christian is to abstain from anything fun or pleasurable. Stop laughing. Because that's pleasurable, you should not laugh. And so we still have that, that, um, uh, that lingering idea in Christianity. Do you know where uh, some of the things that come from, from that idea that we should not be having fun as Christians is uh, running in the sanctuary. Now, now, some of us are really still against running in the sanctuary, and I am uncomfortable with that. But that's one of the things that came, and we don't even realize it. Children, do you know why children run? Because they're happy. And do you know what Christians have been teaching for centuries? Stop. Wipe that smile off your face. And so that's why we have that rule. That's why we have that rule. Don't run in the sanctuary. Stop being so happy. And so that's one of the misinterpretations of what it means to follow Jesus. Another interpretation uh, uh, is that we think that following Jesus is to, to point out the sins of others, right? Are we guilty of that? I'm guilty of it, you know? And, and sometimes I say, well, I'm doing this in love, you know, because I love you. I will point out your sins. You know, I, I tell you this. Um, I have some friends that will point out my sins. Um, and... You know, I know they love me so much. And when they do it, I'm never offended. Do you know why? Because people are not dumb. You know when someone loves you. You know when someone is not judging you when they point out your sin. You know it. And sometimes they don't even have to say anything, right? They just walk by you and you feel like, oh man. I feel the judgment, right? So speaking the truth in love, it really has to come from within. We have to become love. We have to become like God because God is love. I hope that the work I have endeavored to do here is to clarify what it means to follow Christ. Um, the prayer of a little girl is very telling. Dear Jesus, little girl of maybe five years old, she says, Dear Jesus, please make the bad people good and the good people nice. What, the, what does that tell you? That's like so, it cuts to the heart, doesn't it? And is it really good? Are we really being good if we're not being nice? Jesus came to show us the way. And the reason he didn't speak on theology very much, but spoke on the everyday life, is that if we were just decent people, we would be halfway there in doing God's will, maybe all the way there. Jesus said, you tithe on dill, mint, and cumin. You are so meticulous about wanting to keep the law of God that even if you have 10 pieces of rice, you will bring one piece to God to the temple. And I applaud you for your detailed beliefs. But you have neglected what is so much more important. Weightier matters of the law 
is what Jesus came to teach us. Do you know why? Because if you keep the core of who God is, if you really follow Christ, you will do everything else automatically. You don't have to worry about those things. And Jesus appeals to our common sense. He says, look, if you are gushing out blood and you're bleeding to death, are you going to worry about the laundry you left in the washer? Sometimes you do this, right? Ah, I left the washer. How many times do you do that? We do it all the time. And that's why my clothes smell like mold. Because if you keep it more than a couple of hours and dry it, you can't tell when the clothes are dry. But once you start sweating, oh, what's that smell? Stop laughing. <laughs> we have common sense. I don't care what your wife says about you. I believe you have common sense. And Jesus appeals to your common sense and says, look, there are more important things in life than what, what you're worrying about. There are more important things in life than worrying about that girl with the short skirt. Before you point out the speck in someone else's eye, go look in the mirror and see the telephone pole in yours. Your eye must be really big to fit that log in there. Jesus says, let me tell you what the weightier matters of the law are. What does he say? Matthew 20, 23, 23. If you know nothing else but this and study those three words and live by it, God will be so happy. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. He, he paraphrases Micah 6, 8, which says, God has shown you how to live, what you must do to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And this justice, please, for so long, Christians have interpreted this justice as judgment towards sinners. Is that what it is? Absolutely not. In the context of what Jesus is saying, he was speaking towards those that, that were interpreting justice that way. And he's saying that's not what justice is. Justice is bringing fairness to those who are oppressed and poor. Justice is giving mercy to those who don't even deserve it. Really? Is helping needy people, hurting people, that much of a big deal to God? Is it? Answer me. Absolutely. In fact, he seems to say that that's the only reason you'll make it. In Matthew 25, what does he say? Come, enjoy the kingdom prepared for you. Why, Lord? What have I done? And he says, because you... Preach the word because you had perfect attendance to church. And now I would like that as a pastor. Now I'm, I'm really enjoying the, the, uh, the fuller uh, attendance today. I, I don't know how to interpret this. It's like you're so happy I'm leaving uh, that you, you got us. What is this? Why, you know, why wasn't this full like uh, before? Uh, anyway. Mio, Mio is my nickname. You know that. Mr. Easily Offended. That's, that's what my wife calls me every day. Stop being Mio. Uh, so, what was I saying? Uh, I need to stay to the script. This is how I get into trouble. Um, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 7, 21, but only the one who does the will of my Father. Now, I want to, I want to say that, that uh, we should not be so fearful about, am I going to make it? Trust God with that. 
and just worry about following Jesus, okay? So if I were to, had to have more time, I would expound on what, this, what Jesus is really saying, what it means to really follow the will of the Father, and which is to just follow God. Be, be a daisy. Yeah, just like, just so close. Where are you going, Jesus? You know what? You, just can you give me a break a little bit? No, no. Be like Jacob. Clung to God and say, I will not let you go. And, 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 and the angel said, well, hey, you know what? I have to go. I, I got, I, I'm busy. Uh, um, and Jacob clung. I will not let you go. So I had to break the rib and say, okay, I got to like, uh, make you, uh, disabled so I can, I can get out of here. We got to be like Jacob. Am I making any sense? We got to cling to God. We got to follow Jesus. We got to just be like, Lord, where are you? You going, am I following you? Professing Christ may not be much at all. Lord, Lord, we have to live, live our, our profession of the Lord. What does it mean to call God our Lord? How does that look at 10 a.m. on Monday morning? What does it mean to follow Christ? I hope you got some sense over the last eight years of what it means, what the core values of Christ really are. You know, and one thing that I want to leave with you is this, this word of hope. How do we follow Christ more closely? What's the, what's the key? What do you think? What, is there a formula? Is, is there a shortcut? Is there, is there some, 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 uh, uh, um, have you, have you ever, uh, done this before where, where, um, you, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of something. Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube. I can do it in uh, less than two minutes. Uh, and I was going to do that for a children's story one time, but uh, I can do that in heaven. Uh, if I ever try to do Rubik's Cube, you know what it is, right? It will take, I, 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 I am not that brilliant to figure it out. Well, there's formulas. You know, there's little patterns that you can use. All you have to know is about four of them, and then you can, fig you can do it in less than two minutes. You can do it too, Isabel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can teach you. Yeah. Th is there something like that for, for following Christ? Is there some, some, if I do this and this and this and this, then I can follow Christ, and I want to tell you what that is today before I go. Well, you want to know? What is it? It's just one thing. Just one thing we have to do. And that is all we have to do to follow Christ and become like him is to stop trying to hide and cover up. The biggest enemy is not the devil whom we like to blame to deflect our guilt, as Adam and Eve tried to blame the serpent for their disobedience. The enemy is the temptation to hide and cover ourselves. Do you know what the devil is really afraid of? It is a life that is open and authentic in God's presence. Someone who can come as just as you are before the Lord. That is the most fearful thing to the enemy. Do you know why? Why? Because if you are yourself before God, if you are just being real for one minute, that is an invitation for the Holy Spirit to enter your life. That's all it takes for you to be a real person. 
When you are, when you can just say, you know what, I'm not going to wear this mask anymore. I am going to let down my facade. You know what, I don't care what others, others will say about me in church. I'm going to go to church and be myself. Now, I, I, I try to do that while I was here. And uh, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm sorry to those that were offended that I was maybe a bit too uh, uh, myself. I, no, no, uh, I never intended to, to harm or, or offend anyone. I hope uh, you realize that. Do you remember the first story, first sermon I preached to you? It was an audition sermon. This is a sermon that you liked enough to, to hire me. Uh, it, 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 and in that story, I, I, t I told the story. If some of you that were here might remember that story of the guy who, who, were, who was looking for a job at the zoo. I told this story recently at Praxis. So he was desperate for a job. He goes to the zoo. And the zoo guy says, you know, um, a while ago, our gorilla died. And uh, we don't have enough money to acquire a real and authentic gorilla. So we'll pay you to put on this gorilla suit and get in the cage and, and, and uh, pretend to be a gorilla. Well, the guy is kind of offended by this because his mother didn't raise him to be a gorilla. But he's desperate for a job, so he gets in the cage, and at first he's kind of shy. But after a while, he gets really into it, and he's swinging on the vines one day. And he is swinging so enthusiastically that he swings right over the cage into the next one where they keep the lion. Instantly, the lion's breath is upon him, and he panics in fear, and he starts yelling, Help! Help! Let me out of here! It really surprised the, the, the onlookers to, to see a speaking gorilla. And then he hears the whisper from the lion. And shut up, you idiot, or we'll both get fired. Not one authentic creature in the whole zoo. I think life is like that. Life is full of cover-ups, full of hiding and wearing masks so that people will not see the real us. And if we want to follow Christ, we, if we really want to, we must be a community of people where we are free to be ourselves. Because once we take off the mask and we begin to become authentic, that is the moment for God. That is the permission that you give to God and the Holy Spirit enters your life and Holy Spirit causes you to have self-awareness, the Holy Spirit causes you to repent. King David <clears throat> was having a great life until Prophet Nathan came and told the story about the rich man who had many sheep but still stole that one precious lamb from the neighbor and killed it and gave it to the neighbor. Remember that story? David is furious. Who is this man? He must be fun punished. And what does Nathan say? You are that man. Do you know why prophets were killed by kings so much in the Bible? Because that was their job. To point out, to, to hope that that these kings and other leaders would take off their masks and realize who they really are. But they didn't, when, they, when, when, when the sins were pointed out to them, they didn't like it. And they had the prophet slaughtered. Now what makes David so great is not that he was a great guy. Because he was an adulteress, I mean adulterer, and a murderer, and liar, and whatever else. He was terrible. But he remains someone who is so holy and good. Why? Why? Because when someone gave him the opportunity to become authentic, he 
took it and he cried out. Psalm 51 records, cleanse me, O Lord. Wash me and make me whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That's a prayer of repentance of a person who realizes who they really are when they finally become real with God. What else does God need from us but authenticity? If we can be real with ourselves. <clears throat> if God's church can be a place where people feel comfortable to take off their masks and be themselves, it would be a place where they would meet God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what I believe, and that's what I feel called to promote. Now, as I close, I, wanna, I want to apologize for, for, um, for leaving, um, frankly, I, I really did not think it would be that much of a big deal to you, um, because I, like I said at the beginning, I have this mindset that we're all equals, and, uh, no one person is more important than the other, so um, I'm not indispensable, and there are far more qualified uh, workers of God. So I was very surprised to see all, to get all the love in the last few weeks, all the tears. And I'm like, I didn't know you liked me that much. How about you never smiled at me before? Now you're all blubbering in front of me. Well, tell me you love me, you know, before I decide. But thank you so much for all the love. And I, I, I like to apologize if you feel abandoned. I like to apologize to those that, that I haven't made myself clear to through my speech. Uh, from time to time, I have offended you. For example, the, my sermon titled, Don't Make God Number One. If you were not offended, you would have heard that the conclusion said, make God the only one. Because if you make God number one, who is number two? God says no other gods. That's what I meant. I wasn't saying don't make God number one. I apologize to those that, that I have offended with maybe unclear speech. Uh, I have to tell you, this is the last thing I have to say to you. I was the one that asked to be transferred, so stop bothering the conference. Uh, uh, well, there are a few reasons why I thought it would be best for this church that I move on. But the biggest reason is not, the biggest reason that I decided to, to go is not because some people asked me to leave or some were campaigning against me. That's not the main reason. I, 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 I am willing to suffer. The main reason I'm leaving is that, as you already know, a pastor does not reach everyone. And my leading and preaching have not ministered to everyone. And for almost eight years, these poor people haven't felt inspired to follow Christ. I am concerned about that. Even if it's just a few that don't feel inspired by me to follow Christ, I feel like someone else should give it a go. 
um, I have no greater, I have no other agenda in my life. I will lay down my life for you if that's what it means, if that's what it will take for you to be a daisy, to follow Christ closely. I have no ill feelings at the moment <laughs> toward anyone because I try my best not to discriminate love. I will say to you for the last time, no matter who you are in this congregation, I love you. Okay, no, please, please. No. no, I I have just a, two more sentences to say. Okay, just to indulge me this one last time. I I I will be contacting those of you that uh, I have uh, butted heads with recently. And uh, so that we can have long hugs, and uh, just to tell you in person how much uh, I love you, and I how much I pray for you each day, and uh, I and to apologize for uh, for having offended you. In, in, in you know, I hope you I hope you can believe me when I say I never intended to, um, and so. I, I want to leave this place with, with good with everyone, and uh, we can remain friends. Um, I can't tell you where I'm going yet because it's not finalized, but uh, it's it's kind of close to this place. <laughs> I said too much. I said too much. There must there's there's a kind of like a pattern of the pastors going from here to somewhere. I still haven't revealed anything. I, I haven't. I haven't said it. Technically, I haven't told you. No, I haven't. Listen, I'm not moving. You know that. I'm still at uh, 3638 3rd Avenue, Locker Center. I, I can give you my code to enter the house if, uh, if you want to wait for me. And we can chat and we can eat uh, my food. Uh, if you come to ha my house, you have to eat kimchi. <laughs> and, uh, and you have to take off your shoes, even if your feet smell. <laughs> We're going to really keep in touch, you know. And, and you know, I have, I've asked you from time to time, if, you, if anyone is out there that wants to spend all day with me uh, sometime, please call me, because I don't, I don't want to be the one to to uh, ask you if you don't really like me. So, you know, I'll just know, oh, yeah, yeah. this way I know for sure that you want to be my friend. Uh, this is my last Sabbath, but it's not my last day of work because I got to clean out my, my room uh, and uh, I have to, you know, remove the portable toilet in there. And, and, uh, and what else? Oh, I need to, I have appointment with so many of you until like the mid-June. Um, and so if, if any of you want to uh, buy me lunch, <laughs> June 15th is my last day. This is my last Sabbath, but June 15th, uh, I love you all. May God bless you. <laughs>